Hey guys, well here we are in Fusion 360 and in today's video we're going to be designing our coolant plates. Now these are plates that cap off the turret so that coolant can flow directly to your tooling. So we're going to create a sketch here. In the manual it gave me dimensions so we're going to uh, sketch this out. So we are 29 millimeters and 47 millimeters then we're going to draw a line here and this is going to be 16.64 we're going to draw a line here pressing L for line D for dimension this is going to be 20 millimeters. T to trim. I'm going to trim this line and this line. We're going to go over here and put a fillet right here. Uh, this is 3 millimeters. We're going to put one here. 2 millimeters. 2 millimeters. We're going to just round these corners off. These are all 2 millimeters here. All right, starting to take shape here. Uh, next, we're going to put a hole. I'm going to draw a circle here. This circle is 10 millimeters. D for dimension. We're going to dimension from here to here is 7.5 millimeters. And from the center to the end here, is 41.25 okay so next we need to put our slot in here now this slot is to allow the coolant to run from the the port that's on the turret over so that it can be in line with the tool and then we're going to come back later and sort out the angle and drill that hole manually so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle here and this is going to be 6.43 millimeters. We're going to draw another one here and another one over here. Now this circle needs to be 6.43, sorry, 6.43 and this dimension needs to be 5.25. There we go. From here to here and then from this center to here is 14.43 this one is also 14.43 is 22.75 all right then we're going to just tie these together we're going to put A line here, L for line. Then we're going to come back and we're going to trim the stuff we don't need here. So T for trim. And there we have our slot. All right, so all that looks good. We can finish our sketch. I'm still using my Space Mouse and CAD Mouse from 3D Connections, getting used to that. I'm really starting to like it. It's it's taken it's taken some time to get used to it, but I'm really enjoying it. So we're going to take this and we're going to extrude this. So I'm going to right click, hit extrude five millimeters I'm gonna go back in here and turn my sketch on I don't know why it default turns that off but it does uh, we're gonna extrude again now this groove here is two millimeters so we're going to extrude this up three millimeters and there we go so here is our finished part 
All right, so let's go into manufacture and we'll can this out. So the first setup here, first the facing operation, our boring, then we're going to do our slot. There are some adaptive. A contour. And last, we're just going to break these edges off. All right. Well, that looks good. Face off the back side. I'm a little concerned about how I'm going to clamp this. It's such a small part, and I don't want it to get any kind of chatter on there. So I'll have to sort that out on the Precision Matthews. All right. So let's go out to the Precision Matthews and we will machine this out. So now that we have this drawn in Fusion 360, we're just going to machine this off. So we're going to do this the bottom first, which includes the slot, the hole, and some adaptive clearing. About three tool changes, so let's get started. First operation is our facing operation.
chamfer operation here. We're just going to knock off the corners. That's five and a half minute cycle time there. Turns out really good. All right, so the next operation, we'll just flip it over. We're gonna face off this material here left behind from this operation, and that should be it. Okay, so now we've got the piece out. We need to machine off this material here. So I've just flipped it over. Put it in the vise here and we're going to just face this off. Now because the material is unsupported here, I'm going to face this direction and come back and face in the opposite direction. We're going to be facing both ways. If you'll recall in my facing video, the face mill has a little bit of a slant to it. The trailing edge here cuts a little bit deeper than the this edge here. So what I'm hoping here is this trailing edge, when it comes back for the second pass in this direction, will cut and the backside here will not. And that's going to prevent this from uh, chattering. Normally when you have stock hanging over like this, in my uh, experience, it, it wants to vibrate and chatter a little bit. So I'm hoping this will eliminate that. Normally I always face in the same direction, but in this case, this is one of those situations where it's beneficial to go both ways. So let's see how it does. Well, you can see that worked out really well. We didn't get any chatter there, so pretty happy with that. Now, I'm not going to be doing a chamfer operation on this side. I'll just hit it with the Naga tool and knock off these corners. All right, so let's take this out. We'll go over to the G0602, and we'll see how it looks on the turret. All right, so we finished up the coolant plate mount. Now, this is the alternate one. If you recall in the last video, we talked about redesigning this so that the groove went in the opposite direction and this was a little bit thinner so that we could get past our parting tool. So you can see the difference there. So let me show you how it's going to work. Let's see if I can zoom in and get all this. So you can see right here is the port for the coolant to come out. So it's going to come out, hit the groove here, run down over to the side. And now we've got clearance where we can bolt this up. I'll then later on, I'm going to come back after I get everything sorted, I'm going to come back and drill a hole at an angle 
so that I can direct the coolant towards the uh, parting tool there. So you can see the original configuration. It wouldn't allow me to get the bolt in here. Now it works fine for the uh, threading tool. It works just fine. So this is just a little bit higher and it's not going to work. So I had to redesign it, but it's not a big deal. I had to machine some of these anyway, so it was just a couple of uh, just had to redesign it didn't take that long now these are low profile M8 socket head screws you can pick them up at MacMaster you can see how that's gonna work just fine now one thing I did notice is the drawing called for these to be five millimeters thick however the ones that they sent were seven millimeters uh, I don't think it really matters. Uh, we just went by the drawing. Another thing I did notice in the drawing is it called for this hole to be 10 millimeters. However, this is an M8, so I went and made these 9 millimeters. All right, so let's get these capped off. I'm still waiting on a couple more pieces of tooling. I've still got to machine. Let me zoom out here. I'm still waiting for a, another tool one like this I use this one quite often so I'm, I'm waiting on that alright guys well that re wraps up this video and next week's video we're gonna machine the outside tool blocks that will be for center drills drills boring tools so we'll do that in next week's video if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in click on that subscribe button down below that way when I post a video like this one if it's something you're interested in, you can stop by and check it out. If you're interested in the Altros turret, there'll be a link in the video description as well as right here. And you can stop by and check them out. Very happy with this turret so far. Still got to get it wired up and get these outside blocks machined. And then we can start configuring it in Mach 3. So stay tuned for that. As always, guys, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe.